Hey there folks, in this video I'm going to give you guys 10 tips for setting up your home studio to get the best sound possible out of your equipment. We're going to be covering things like speaker placement and orientation, how far your speakers should be from the front wall, the importance of creating symmetry in your studio, and of course the all-important acoustic treatment. The first thing I want to mention real briefly is the importance of mixing on headphones. I like to mix 50% on headphones, 50% on my speakers. And on that note, don't go out and buy a pair of $800 headphones. 2% of people on Spotify are using super expensive headphones. You want to hear your mix the way everyone else will. Now let's talk about actually setting up your home studio. The first thing I want to say, you want to make sure that your speakers are firing lengthways into your room. The room I'm in here is about three and a half meters long by two and a half meters wide. So therefore I'm firing my speakers along the three and a half meter axis. The reason for this is it maximizes the amount of space the sound waves have to travel before they can reflect off the rear wall. More energy is lost so that when the sound wave comes back to me from behind, there's less phase cancellation or amplification, less peaks, less valleys. When you do your research on this stuff, you'll probably discover what's called the 38% rule. You measure the length of your room, which is the axis you should be firing your speakers along. You measure 38% of the length of the room from the front wall and place your listening position there. What you should be doing is experimenting with the room that you're in. Close your eyes and then slowly roll forwards and backwards in your chair. Pay close attention to the bass and the mid-bass. You'll notice that as you roll forwards and backwards through the room, the sound will change dramatically. So you want to find the sweet spot of your room. Tip number three is to match your studio speakers to your room. If you're in a room like mine, which is three by two meters, don't go out and buy a pair of eight inch Adams. If you're finding that your speakers are way too bassy or that you're compensating with a lot of low shelf, either on the speaker settings or in your software, it's a sign your speakers are just too big. Tip number four is to create a triangle. The distance between your left speaker and your right speaker should be the same distance that they are from your listening position. This is how we optimize the stereo field of our speakers. If your speakers are too wide, you'll get a stereo effect, but you won't be able to locate where things are in the soundstage very well. If your speakers are too narrow, you're actually undermining the performance of your investment. Tip number five is to adjust the height of your speakers. Place your speakers on desk stands or floor stands and then adjust the height of each speaker so that they match the level of your ears. You don't really want your speaker to be underneath your head firing upwards because then you get reflections off your ceiling and you get all sorts of weird phasing going on. And you don't want your speakers to be above you firing down because now sound is going to reflect off the desk even worse than it already is and potentially off the floor as well. Make sure your speakers are at ear level firing towards you. If you're placing them vertically, which I personally think you should be, you should be aiming them at the space just behind your head. This maximizes the stereo field and imaging. If you're placing your speakers horizontally, you want to make sure the tweeters are on the outsides and not on the insides towards each other. Tip number seven is to create symmetry within your studio. The space between your right speaker and the outside wall should be the same space between your left speaker and the outside wall. How you treat your right wall should be how you treat your left wall. This side should sound exactly like this side, and it won't if sound is reaching this ear sooner or later than it is reaching this ear. I've done the best I can in this room, and even when I calibrate my audio using Sonarworks Reference 4, it still wants to dip the right speaker by a decibel or two because it perceives that side to be louder. Tip number eight is to experiment with placing your speakers right against the front wall. 
you massively increase the amount of bass it puts out to such an extent that you pretty much have to apply like a negative 6 dB low shelf to the EQ. But what it can also do is improve the clarity of your bass, your low end, your mid bass. By placing your speakers against the front wall, you're increasing the distance from them and the wall behind you. In theory, you should have less reflection, you should have less phase cancellation and amplification. So experiment with this. Tip number nine is to avoid using a desk if possible. This is not something I have managed to do just yet, but you might want to think about this if you can. When you have a large, thick, hard surface underneath your studio monitors, you're going to notice a very nasty boost in the mid bass of your sound. If you're trying to create the perfect listening environment, whether it's for mixing or just listening to music, you shouldn't be placing your speakers near anything, but it's not possible for most of us. So if your speakers have a desk mode, make sure you switch them on. Tip number 10, apply acoustic treatment to your room. You need a lot of mass, very dense but porous mass to absorb sound frequencies. Build yourself some bass traps or buy them. I went down to the hardware store and I bought some very large fiberglass wool. They're insulation bats with a very high absorption rating, but they're just horrible to look at. So then I went to the textile shop, I bought some fabric, some safety pins, and I just wrapped them up in some nice fabric. And now I can't even tell that they're in the room. I can with my ears, however, because the bottom end is now massively tightened up. I don't have that huge boominess that I had before because I now have a lot of very big, dense mass high up in the corners of my studio. I've also placed pre-made bass traps behind my studio monitors because I still found the bass response of the room was just much too high. You wanna make sure that you pad up the side walls of your listing position. You're not trying to create an anechoic chamber where you have literally no reflection because that's unrealistic, but you want to absorb and diffuse a lot of sound. You flatten your frequency response as much as possible. I've actually placed two very large fiberglass panels against my window, and I've found that this tightens up the mid-range where things like vocals and instruments tend to sit in the mix. I've got two closet doors behind me and I've placed a large headboard against them which I don't use anymore. Lastly, if like me you can't avoid using a desk, at least for the time being, you want to think about padding up your desk as well where you can. Sound emanates from your speaker cabinet in every conceivable direction. If you have a desk, you want to pad it up in the areas where possible, especially at the points of reflection. Before I finish this video, I just want to give you some bonus advice, and this is on the topic of calibrating your studio speakers. Throughout this video, you've seen me using the Behringer ECM 8000. This is designed for measuring frequency response, but we can also use this same microphone to actually tweak the EQ curve of our speakers using software like Sonarworks Reference 4, which is what I use. Now, I wouldn't recommend you do this as a substitute for acoustic treatment or studio design. This is a supplement. You do this after you've done everything I've spoken about in this video. What Sonarworks does is it plays sine wave sweeps through your speakers as you move your microphone to different locations in your studio. It will generate an EQ curve that compensates for all the peaks and valleys, but you might actually decide, I don't want to calibrate my speakers, I want to hear everything raw. And sure enough, that's a good idea. I mean, if you can make your mix sound really good in a room that usually sounds pretty crap, well, you're doing a really good job. And there you go, folks. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope it helps you to get your studio sounding better. I hope it helps you get better value out of your investments. Thanks for listening and watching, folks, and happy mixing.